Ankylosaurus magniventris, the living, breathing tank that is widely recognized and loved by many, even if you've never seen so much as a single Jurassic movie. Loser. We've seen many depictions of these dinosaurs in the past, such as Jurassic World, Dinosaur King, Dinosaur King is what you wanna be, yeah. and Ice Age 3. You know, the best one. Were you killed? Sadly, yes. But I lived. The Isle is no exception from this list, as it too had Anki as one of the many playables back in the day. Despite some... mild controversy, Anki was suited for a much calmer playstyle, as is made obvious by its slow movement speed and gluttonous lifestyle. It fills the niche of being a slightly lazier character while hitting like a truck if it's provoked. Avrima's Ankylosaur, unsurprisingly, seems to follow suit. And now, with the introduction out of the way, let's discuss how Ankylosaurus should be. Ankylosaurus is among the largest of its genus, which is aptly named Ankylosaurus. I quit. They are widely recognized as a group of heavily armored, slow-moving dinosaurs, some of which sported a menacing club at the end of its tail, which is believed to have been used for defensive purposes by breaking the ankles and kneecaps of would-be predators. Like many of its brethren, including Euoplocephalus and Cychania, these hefty herbivores are believed to have split from the group Stegosauria at some point in the mid-Jurassic period, effectively replacing them as the dominant medium-sized herbivore although that part of the fossil record is spotty at best. The genus was among the last of the non-avian dinosaurs that lived up until their demise around 66 million years ago, when the Chicxulub asteroid wiped out over three quarters of all life on Earth in what is now known as the KT extinction, one of the worst disasters in the history of the Earth, second only to the creation of Twitter. Before its expiration date, Ankylosaurus would spend its time lumbering across the coniferous regions of Alberta, Canada, and western North America about 70 to 66 million years ago. The animal was first discovered in the years 1906 in an expedition led by Barnum Brown in the famous Hell Creek Formation in Montana. While we humans have acquired several fossil fragments of Ankylosaurus since then, we have unfortunately never found a complete specimen, a common occurrence in paleontology. Regardless, we have a pretty good idea of what this creature looked like. They were covered in a thick layer of bones, known as osteoderms, which fused together to create its distinctive armor for which it's known. This natural Kevlar served as its main form of defense against its main predator, Tyrannosaurus. Which is why this... is nothing like what Ankylosaurus looked like. Of course, you can tell by the body that it's supposed to be an Anki, as it sports the distinctive head shape, club tail, and short but tanky body. Despite this, however, it seems to have lining along its thighs and mid-back that resemble the armor of the modern-day Indian rhinoceros. If a paleontologist were to see this, they'd probably quit on the spot knowing anybody called this an ankylosaur. That being said, it kinda goes hard. Look, I'm not gonna sit here behind the safety of my screen and tell you that this design is objectively correct. By scientific standards and based on what we know about this animal, this is straight up just wrong. But despite this, I've always been a fan of speculative takes on dinosaurs and most extinct creatures. Some of my favorite paleo art on the internet portray these animals with very bird-like characteristics, such as wattles and quills, traits many would not normally associate with dinosaurs, which is why I am in full support of this take on the Yankee. Now, don't get me wrong, I love realism as much as the next Isle Tuber. Prehistoric Planet by the great Sir David Attenborough is far and away one of the best nature documentaries I've ever seen. But this is, ultimately, a video game. While I do think the ecosystem and playstyles of these creatures should in some way honor their real-life counterparts, with some embellishment for the sake of variety, the design is a creative liberty I am much more lenient with. Especially if it's a unique perspective that hasn't been done yet or I just haven't seen yet. That is one thing that I can wholeheartedly appreciate from this game, the uniqueness of their character designs. Take Hypsilophodon, for example. Every portrayal of Hypsy is just so drab and boring and- oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Now, what does the Isle come along and do? They said, no, screw that basic bitch dinosaur. We're gonna do some weird shit. And they gave us far and away the greatest and most creative interpretation of this animal we've ever seen. In my opinion, of course. But if there's one thing that can't be denied is that they do put effort and care into the dinosaurs that they make. Now, some of you may refer to this as glazing. I call it recognizing the positives as well as the negatives in a nuanced way. 
something that many in this community are incapable of doing. But that's a different matter. While I completely understand some of the issues that players may have with Anki, this design is just another example of this creativity that I love to see in mainstream dinosaur content. I rest my case. <laughs> So, throughout this series, specifically for herbivores, I'll be combining the diet and the habitat category, as they go hand in hand with one another, and I'm not funny enough to make virtual plants interesting for 5 minutes. Of course, this is subject to change for animals like Protoceratops, but we'll get there when we get there. Seeing as how Ankylosaurus is a short king, or queen, its diet is limited to ground shrubs, fruits, nuts, and ferns. With the imminent release of the new map, Perhaps it's possible for these lumbering roly-polies to stick to secluded groves or psychic gardens where they will hopefully find all they need. These locations could be scattered across Gateway and serve to fulfill different diets for Anki. And as for where Anki can hang out when it's not eating? Well, pretty much anywhere. Grasslands, the highlands, swamps, even the beach assuming that resources are available. This piece of concept art specifically shows that Anki will have no qualms traversing rivers and shallow lakes. And also, there's a good reason why Anki is strolling along the bottom of the river as carelessly as a man going out for a walk at night. Hippos can't swim due to the density of their bones. Their skeletons are so thick that they are physically unable to float, despite looking like living pool floaties. It's for this reason that elephants, for example, are still able to swim, despite being much heavier. Those who passed 5th grade physical science know that density is what determines whether or not something floats. And guess what Anki is? 80% bone! Its armor needs to be almost as dense as I am in order to actually be useful in protecting from predators, so it makes sense it would sink like a log if it went into the water. And also... Okay, up, and speaking of concept art, this piece suggests another creative use for Anki's club. Schmacking trees for coconuts. In my opinion, this works great from a biological standpoint. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Ankylosaurus would use its club for things other than fighting such as using it as a form of gaining access to food, or even creating shallow divots in the ground which it could then lay its eggs in. A creative way to nest. As for group limits, I feel a group of 2-3 to three adults is enough for an animal of this size and playstyle. Many, if not all of the animals on this roster would think twice before trying to attack a pair or a trio of Ankies. Which brings me to my next point. Herbivorous animals in the isle exhibit a much more defensive playstyle than carnivores, and Anki pooled all of his points into defense. Naturally, its combat would purely be a reaction. Now, the biggest indication of a new ability in regards to defense would be these two pieces of concept art. One, which depicts an adult specimen absolutely kerfuffling two Acrocanthosauruses simply by laying down, and the other completely bamboozling a pack of raptors by doing the exact same. For the remainder of this video, I will be referring to this maneuver as the hunker down. After thought, feel free to use this term, just don't forget to send me my check for one million dollars. Anyway, the hunker down appears to be an impenetrable tactic, used if the player feels as if the odds aren't in their favor, or to try and psych out the opposing carnivore. Luring them into a false sense of security before applying the status effect, brain hemorrhage. Now, I'm not sure how long the Anki will be able to maintain this pose, as being able to do so indefinitely seems a bit broken. Perhaps the armor quality of the Anki is determined by the richness of its diet, similar to how Gallimimus' speed is influenced by its nutrition. It would make sense, and would undoubtedly add another incentive into pursuing diet-specific food, while bulking up your defenses as a character to make yourself truly formidable. But as for the hunker down, my idea is for it to be similar to the armor system in games such as Call of Duty and Halo. The player will have a limited pool of armor that would negate damage to its health so long as it's active, and could only be broken by some of the most powerful creatures on the island. This would make raptors and smaller animals who have no business messing with an ankylosaurus virtually useless. So these dum-dums over here are wasting their time. Now, bigger carnivores would stand a much better chance at breaking through this shield, as they obviously do more damage and thus would be able to wear it down more easily, forcing it to engage instead of essentially avoiding the entire encounter. Of course, each individual engagement would be different from one another. As I previously stated, the effectiveness and duration of the hunker down would be determined by how fulfilling your diet is. So, if an Anki decides to live like the average American, see, I can make fun of other people too, and lead an unhealthy lifestyle, 
animals such as Allosaurus and Albertosaurus may cause a problem. However, an Anki that keeps up with its diet plan would be a tough nut for even a Rex or a Giga to crack. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I think Anki's hunker down should work. And while we're at it, let's discuss the infamous club. I'd like to point out that Ankylosaurus should 100% swing its entire body when attacking with its tail, similar to how Stegosaurus currently swings. This will make combat more engaging for carnivores attempting to take down one of these breathing boulders, as they will have to time their attacks carefully in accordance with the swing of its tail. In Legacy, the tail swing was complete booty cheeks. Very lazily made, and while it of course dealt an insane amount of damage, it looked completely unnatural. This attack realistically would cause any animal to completely break their spine. And again, I'm all for speculation. Sticking to realism 100% of the time isn't necessary, and in some cases can even make things boring. But that attack animation was just stupid. Despite this though, it seems the Anki will pose a very real issue for large carnivores, as even Spino is getting its teeth knocked out by that club. I believe this is warranted, as the only consistent predator that would be able to hunt Anki in the real world would have been T-Rex, and even then, this crunchy Twinkie would not have been at the top of the menu by any means. However, the key for predators to take down Anki isn't in its own concept art, but instead in another. This drawing of Spinosaurus demonstrates what seems to be the only method for carnivores to render Anki completely useless, flipping it belly side up. With its meaty gut exposed, Anki would have no form of defense or method of evasion after it has been flipped. Assuming this mechanic is actually planned on being added and wasn't just some sort of weird Jurassic World fetish, this appears to be the only reliable way to extinguish an Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus will be the go-to creature for players who desire to live a life with minimal concerns. Waddling blissfully along the plains of Gateway without a care in the world, its defensive playstyle would only make a select few animals truly a threat, while the rest can choose to either befriend it, or meet the mean end of a meat tenderizer. I get the feeling that Anki will be much more popular this time around than it was in Legacy, as the devs have, for the most part, proved that they can do a better job of fixing and balancing the animals to fit into the rules they are supposed to. Anki will no longer be something for carnivores to pick their teeth with, but rather a gentle giant who could still be more than capable of erasing six hours of progress at the drop of a hat. My advice to all you carnivores out there? Choose wisely whenever you come across this wondrous and majestic, yet indomitable creature. Really quickly, just before I disappear again, thank you guys so much for helping me surpass 1,000 subscribers. I seriously could not be more thankful. I know YouTubers say this all the time, but I'm not some other bitch-ass YouTuber, okay? I'm for real. You guys who stuck around until this point, let me know if a 1,000 subscriber special is something that you would be interested in seeing. I don't even know what I would do if I'm being completely transparent, but just say so. If you have any ideas, drop them down. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. I know I only made a couple jokes about it, but I don't hate British people. I hate everyone equally. Everyone is going to be made fun of. Not a soul is safe.